Caterpillar and Alice looked at each other for some the time in silence. At last, the caterpillar took the hookah out of its mouth and addressed her in a languid, sleepy voice. Who are you, said the caterpillar. This is not an encouraging opening for a conversation, Allison replied, rather shyly. I, 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 I hardly know, sir, just at present. At least I know who I was when I got up this morning, but I think I have changed several times since then. What do you mean by that, said the caterpillar. Explain yourself. I can't explain myself. I'm afraid, sir, said Alice, because I'm not myself, you see. I don't see, said the caterpillar. I'm afraid... I can't put it more clearly, Alice repeated more politely, for I can't understand it myself to begin with, and being so many different sizes in a day, it's very confusing. It isn't, said the caterpillar. Well, perhaps you haven't found it yet, said, Al said Alice, but when you have to turn into a, into a um, Charles Salis, you will someday, you know, then after that you will turn into a, a butterfly, I should think. You'll feel it a little queer, won't you? Not a bit, said the caterpillar. Well, perhaps you, your feelings may be different, said Alice. All I know is it would feel very queer to me. <laughs> you, said the caterpillar contemptuously. What are you? Which brought them back at the beginning of the conversation. Alice felt a little irritated at the caterpillars making such very short remarks and drew herself up, she said very gravely. I think you ought to tell me who you are first. Why, said the caterpillar. Here was another puzzling question. And as Alice could not think of any good reason, and the caterpillar seemed to be very unpleasant state of mind, she turned away. Come back, the caterpillar called after her. I've got something important to say. This sounded promising. Certainly, Alice turned and came back. Keep your temper, said the caterpillar. Is that all, said Alice, swallowing down her anger as well as she could? No, said the caterpillar. Alice thought she might as well wait as she had nothing else to do. And perhaps, after all, it might tell her something worth hearing. For some minutes it puffed away without speaking, but at last it folded its arms, took the hookah out of its mouth, and again said, So do you think you're changed, do you? I'm afraid I am, sir. I can't remember the things I used to, and I don't keep the same size in ten minutes together. Can't remember what things, said the caterpillar. Well, I've tried to say, how did the little busy bee, but it came out all different. Alice replied with a very maconey voice, Repeat. Repeat, you are old, Father William, said the caterpillar. Alice folded her arms and began. That is not right, said the caterpillar. Not quite right, I am afraid, said Alice timidly. Some of those words have gotten altered. It is wrong from beginning to end. And the caterpillar decently, decidedly, and there wasn't silence, and there was silence for some minutes. The caterpillar was first able to speak. What size do you want to be, it asked. Oh, I'm not particular as to size, Alice hastily said. Only one doesn't like changing so often, you know. I don't know, said the caterpillar. Alice said nothing. Uh, You'll get used to it in time, said the caterpillar, and it put the hookah back in its mouth and began smoking it again. Alice remained looking thirdly at the mushroom for a minute, trying to make out which were the two sides of it, and as it was perfectly round, she found this a very difficult question. However, at the last, she stretched her arms round it as far as they would, and broke off the edge with her with each hand. She felt a good deal frightened by this sudden change, but she felt that there was no time to be lost. It was a shrinking rapidly, so she set to work at once to eat some of the other bit. Her chin was pressed so closely against her foot that there was hardly room to open up her mouth. But she did it at last and managed to swallow a morsel of the left hand bit. Come, my head's free at last, said in a tone of delight, which changed into alarm of another moment when she found that her shoulders were nowhere to be found. As there it seemed that there would be no chance of getting her hands up over her head, she tried to get her head down to them. She was delighted to find that her neck bend about easily in any direction, like a serpent. Serpent, screamed the pigeon. I'm not a serpent, said Alice indignantly. Leave me alone. Serpent, I say again, repeated the pigeon but it was more subdued tone. It added kind of sob. I've tried every way, and nothing seems to suit them. I, have, I haven't the slightest, the least idea what you're talking about, said Alice. I've, I've tried the roots of the trees. I've tried banks. I've tried hedges, the pigeon went on without attending to her. But those serpents, there's no pleasing them. Alice was more and more puzzled, but she thought there was no use in saying any more till the p pigeon had finished. I have tasted eggs, certainly, said Alice, who was a very 
truthful child. But little girls eat eggs as quite much as serpents do, you know. I don't believe it, said the pigeon. This was a new idea to Alice, and she was quite silent for a minute or two, which gave the pigeon opportunity for adding. You're looking for eggs. I know that well enough. What it does matter to me whether you're a little girl or... What does it matter to me whether you're a little girl or a serpent? It matters a great deal to me, to me said Alice. But I'm not looking for eggs as it as it happens. If I was, I shouldn't. I sure wouldn't want yours. I don't eat them raw. Well, be off then, said the pigeon. It was so long since she had been anything near the right side that it felt quite strange at first. But she got used to it in a few minutes and began talking to herself as usual. Come, there's half of my plan done now. How puzzling all these changes are. I'm never sure what I'm going to be from one minute to another. However, I've got back to my right size. The next thing I knew was to get into that beautiful garden. How was that to be done, I wonder? S said she came suddenly upon an open place with a little house in it, about four feet high. Whoever lives here, thought Alice, I'll do whatever it takes to, to come upon them this size. Why, I shouldn't frighten them out of their wits. She began nibbling as the right hand bit again and did not venture to go near the house till she had brought herself to nine inches high.